Good afternoon. This is Dr. Bill Bird, Chief Medical Officer at CGH Medical Center, and thank you for joining me for Facebook Live. Today, it's just me, and I'm going to be talking. Unfortunately, I was thinking by now I would have, uh, uh, this pandemic, I'd be, uh, I have nothing left to say. I do have things left to say. So here we are, and I'm going to talk a little bit about pandemic-related stuff, and maybe a few other little uh, odds and ends, odds and ends. So we'll start with, as usual, our facts. And the facts for the week, our fact person is Matt. Matt's going to put those up. There we go. So this is, comes from our county, or from the at least from Whiteside County. And you'll see a top left. The red is this week or the week, this past week, and blue is the week before that. And... Bottom left is the uh, last two weeks, and blue is the two weeks prior to that. And then all those graphs have breakouts based upon, oh, and you, if you go to the right, I'm sorry, um, that's actually the weekend 1114. So the red there is for the both the week prior and the two weeks prior is more is more noticeable, more pronounced in terms of We've had more, it's, it's been a different surge because now we're having, instead of continuing to wind down, we're having more cases as of recent than we were having a week, a couple weeks ago or even a month ago. So a little different in a not so good different way than previous surges. And you can see the breakout based upon age groups. Um, obviously, you're still seeing um, more in the younger folks under 20 but you're also seeing it spread out pretty well with everyone else except the 85, is that 80? I can't read real well, 85 plus folks. Otherwise it seems to be, uh, it's, it's spread out among other, other folks too. And I see, by the way, I see that pop up in the 20 and under, which is just a another good, thanks, Matt. And was there another graph we were gonna show, Matt? I can't remember. Ah, thank you. So this is our positivity rate um, for this week, and this was uh, yesterday. You can see the number of cases really popped up. And as a matter of fact, that bottom graph um, is showing the number of cases on a, on a kind of like a daily, monthly kind of thing. And you look back, and the, the middle bump there in the middle of the graph kind of, that was like the surge we had in uh, spring. And that was more typical where you'd see it go up and then come down. This one, as you can see, that started in, I can't read that number, but I think it was more August or so. It starts going up and peaks and then it goes down and then it's going back up again. So not ideal. And the positivity rate's up again. It's 3.6% for Whiteside County. Our marketing director, Dana McCoy, was telling me that for our region, which is en encompasses like uh, north of us, like Rockford, Freeport, that area, as well as ourselves, uh, positivity rates around 6% or so. So that's definitely gone up recently. Okay, I think that's the graphs that we have for the facts. And as always, as I'm giving my updates here, please feel free to send me a question. Hi, Sally. Let's see. How many of those have been vaccinated? Don't know, Sally, but I will say that um, more have been unvaccinated than vaccinated with the caveat that it does appear that those who have been vaccinated are having, that were vaccinated, let's say back in February or so, that some of their immunity is, is wearing off, which is why these boosters are a good idea because we are seeing um, more vaccinated folks than we had been uh, who are uh, particularly getting um, sick enough to be hospitalized. So yeah, it's um, definitely an issue and, and it goes to the, it appears to go to the waning uh, um, immunity over time uh, from the uh, vaccines. So don't know the actual numbers though, but yeah, the trend is like the trend you're seeing across the country, Sally. Good question though, thank you. So, um, and by the way, I, I think I'll just, since my uh, stream, of, stream of thought here, uh, studies so far for people who have had booster shots, uh, very helpful uh, in terms of preventing symptomatic disease and hospitalizations. So 
the the booster shots do send, do tend to do a, a really nice job of getting your antibodies back up to a, a level that makes it a lot less likely that if you get exposed to someone who is shedding virus that you're going to get sick yourself. Donna. Yeah, that's a great question, Donna. Um, I think I saw today, what was the number? I think about a, a little over 10% of kids, maybe it was a little higher than that, but not much, have had their first vaccine dose. I'm not sure the whole school side of that in terms of what the schools are doing vaccination clinics themselves, Donna. I will, I'll find that out next week and report back on that unless our marketing folks know. And if they know, they'll send me something um, as I'm talking <laughs> here in this in this uh, broadcast. And I'll, I'll let you know then. Okay. So um, where are we at? Ah, news. So we know now that speaking of boosters, that California and Colorado and New Mexico and New York City have all said all adult, all adults 18 plus are eligible for boosters. And we think it's what I'm reading. It's pretty likely that maybe even today that the FDA would approve that for all eligible adults over the age of 18. And as, as you know, it's FDA and then CDC weighs in and then there you go. So it's I, I think it's pretty likely the way it's trending that all adults here by the time I'm talking next week will be eligible for booster shots. That's my that's my prediction on that. So one of the, uh, another piece of news is that you notice that the cases are going up and it's mainly a result of cases going up here in the Midwest, the West and the Northeast because actually where there was a pretty big surge in August and September or so, <clears throat> excuse me, in the deep south, uh, that has, you know, those that's subsided quite a bit. So, yeah, the cases that we see going up now are related to those areas that I'm talking about. Saw a study from the Imperial College in the UK about dexamethasone, which is one of the commonly used medications for hospitalized COVID patients. And as, you, as, we, as we would have thought occurred, occurred, Dexamethasone given to hospitalized patients reduces their risk of um, admission to an intensive care unit or death by about 56%. So we're using it that all our COVID patients uh, get, get dexamethasone. I, I say all, I, almost all of our patients, unless there's some other allergy or something like that, are receiving dexamethasone here at our hospital and hospitals across the country. So it just confirms what we're doing. In our region, Definitely more uh, hospital busyness in terms of being at capacity in the Rockford area. We definitely are. Our hospital is not slow right now, but compared to Rockford, we're not as busy. So Rockford hospitals are getting uh, more of a surge right now than we are. Don't know if that'll flow down to us again or not. I will keep you updated on a week to week basis on that. Read something in the Journal of American Medical Association that I thought was interesting that folks who are on uh, SSRIs, which are a common antidepressant medication, um, have a 8% less risk of COVID uh, death. Not, now we're talking 14.6% versus 16.6%. So not a huge swing, but it's kind of interesting. I think over time we'll figure out what those, um, what they're called SSRIs is the short name for those. We'll find out over time what kind of mechanism of action those drugs seem to have to improve, um, yeah, to help people who are having COVID. I want to a news piece uh, locally that I just want to reinforce is people are, who, are, who need mammograms for women who need those, go ahead and get them, get them scheduled. Uh, particularly though that we're now that we're doing some boosters, just keep in mind that we would ask that you wait six weeks after your your last COVID vaccine to get uh, a mammogram performed. Just, it has to do with it can, in, when you get a, a vaccine, it can uh, enlarge your lymph nodes on that side and that can kind of show up in the mammogram. So we want to hold off on, on those for six weeks afterwards, but otherwise please get your mammograms. Okay, Pfizer has a, 
applied for emergency authorization for their oral pill to treat patients who have COVID. Very interesting, very encouraging. So far, at least, the numbers are 89% reduced risk of hospitalization and, and death for the patients that have been in the studies that they've done for these patients. Now, one, one, interest, one fact about these medicines, about this medicine that is going to be something that we'll have to work through is it's a three-day window from the time you get symptoms to when they recommend that you start taking this medication for it to be most effective. So, and that's similar to regular flu. If you're, if there's a medicine called Tamiflu, you probably have heard of. And ideally for patients who get the regular flu, you start taking Tamiflu within two days of the onset of your symptoms. And that's kind of the recommendations. And if you get outside of that window, we typically don't give patients med that medicine. So I bring all that up just to say, I think that's really encouraging that we're going to have that option, it looks like, for an oral treatment to really reduce hospitalization and death. I'm excited about that. On the testing side, though, that is going to be a bit of a challenge. Uh, first of all, it's, you know, right now, most of the testing done across the country is, tends to be more of a, a turnaround time of 24 hours or so. Uh, definitely for folks here, we don't have the supplies to do just rapid testing on everyone that shows up at our particularly like a ready care or something like that. <clears throat> so that three day window is gonna be a challenge at least I think, but I don't know, we'll see how that all plays out. I'm encouraged. Um, okay, this is Cheryl. I'm just gonna go right to Cheryl's question. If you had a J&J, &J, what booster is best since J&J &J is not available in a booster? Cheryl, I would go, I probably would go with Moderna, but if you could find a Pfizer one, that's not gonna be a bad choice either. Either it, it, basically wherever you're wherever you're wanting to go to get that done, uh, that's where I would go. I know here at, at our facility here at CGH, at the main clinic, we continue to have a, a clinic, and it's been pretty busy with all the boosters and stuff. And we offer Moderna in that clinic. So, and by the way, if you do have if you do get a booster in that clinic, I would ask that you uh, that you um, get signed up for that. Uh, we used to do walk-ins, but because of the increased volume with boosters, we're discouraging walk-ins because it just gums things up a bit. So we have Moderna. I think Moderna would probably be my first choice based upon the efficacy that I've seen, but you're not going to go wrong getting a Pfizer booster either. Good question. Thank you. Marianne. Yeah, we're doing okay with that, Mary. Marianne. Um, definitely continue to have uh, COVID cases, um, but it, it hasn't been like we were at even earlier on in this surge, we had quite a few more patients in the hospital now. Whether we'll mirror uh, over time what the Rockford hospitals are experiencing right now, I don't know. But at this moment, yeah, we, we're, we have the staff to take care of all the patients in the hospital and don't have an overwhelming number of COVID patients. Okay, where am I at? Where am I at here? Oh, next news. Oh, I. you know what? My bad. There's a couple of facts I forgot to mention. <clears throat> so um, this is from the Illinois Hospital Association. Right now we're averaging boost. I'm going to get a little drink of water here. I got a little something in my throat. Okay. <clears throat> we're averaging right now in the state 61,000 vaccines a, a, a day right now for the past week, which is up from where we were at even a week ago. I think we were 30 or 40. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then I, I, Pretty sure that's mainly related to people getting booster shots. So that should stay high for a while. Hope it stays high for a long while. Anywho, uh, the number of folks in the state who are fully vaccinated is 73.3% right now, which is good. However, I do think there's some movement in terms of how we define fully vaccinated. And particularly with the Delta variant and some waning immunity with immunizations that if you've been had the two, if you've had a Pfizer or Moderna one right now, right now at least, it sure seems like we're trending towards fully vaccinated eventually being uh, throwing a booster in, at least for the people that are 65 plus in terms of trying to keep people healthy and out of the hospital and stuff. That's not the case right now, but that does seem to be the, the trend. 
Other news. Oh, this is a local one. So our our blood supply for O negative blood right now, we're like have a one day supply in our region. That's not real good. And, o, and it's for O negative, which is the uh, universal donor. So we do have a blood drive here at the hospital on December 2nd. And in addition to that, oh, here we go. There you go. That's a blood drive. So if you're willing and able, that would be much appreciated. Also, if you're able to, I think it's Davenport where they do the draws in, in between blood drives. The, 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 the company that, that we use here at the hospital that supplies our blood is called Impact Life. Impact Life. So you can get on their website or, and or call their phone number if you have, particularly if you have O negative blood, that would be great if you could give them a, sh a call and, and give some blood if, uh, even before we're supposed to have the, the blood drive. Other news, sobering piece of news. I, I just read this today. One in five healthcare workers have left the field of healthcare since the pandemic began. So you hear about some significant shortages across the country in terms of healthcare workers. That those that number bears that out in terms of the number of folks. And the reason is not just one reason. It's a, a multiple reasons that are causing that. What else do I have for news? Oh, I, I have this here. So as of November 17th, 16% or 31.4 million of, the, of people who have previously been fully vaccinated have received a booster. So we're about 16%. Uh, so about, I, that my math is 84% of people who were fully vaccinated the first time through um, are going to be particularly once all uh, all adults are are given the thumbs up to get boosted. Um, definitely going to be an opportunity for more folks to get boosters, which will have some impact in terms of current surges. It uh, doesn't mean that we still don't recommend and still don't um, ask folks who have who have not been vaccinated at all yet to give that some consideration and to, to get that done to try to get this under control. Okay, that is the news that I have in terms of COVID. Where did I want to go next? I want to do some shout outs. So first of all, I want to give a shout out to our Digestive Health Center, where we do our colonoscopies and upper endoscopies. And the reason I want to give a shout out is I had some scopes last Friday. So it was when I was when I was doing this broadcast last uh, Thursday, I was in the middle of my liquid diet for the day prior to the bowel prep. I hope I didn't look any worse for wear, but yeah, that's uh, I did that last Friday, and they do a great job of, of taking care of you when you show up for our, to our Digestive Health Center. So shout out uh, to uh, some of the nurses, Stephanie Waller and Whitney Phillips and Lindsay Hoyle. They took care of me during uh, that time, and so thanks uh, to them. Thanks to uh, Kara Furch, who is a nurse practitioner over at the clinic, and she's my nurse practitioner for GI-related issues. And of course, to Dr. Monagudo, who does, has been with us for quite a while and really thankful to have him. He does a, a bang up job there. And even at the, the Digestive Health Center, even the, the uh, folks who do the, keep that place uh, uh, clean and, and yeah, keep it safe from that standpoint. Carol is one of the housekeepers that I run into quite often down there. So shout out to Carol as well. So uh, thank you to uh, DHC and that, in that group. I want to give a shout out to our auxiliary once again. Uh, it's their 75th anniversary. And not only that, but for those of you who drive by the hospital once in a while, you'll notice the lights now at nighttime. And that is thanks to our auxiliary who take care of purchasing those. So thanks to our auxiliary for that. I also want to give a, a shout out, shout out uh, to our employee of the month. And I think Matt will put up our employee of the month. There's Esther Weil. So Esther, a uh, shout out to you as employee of the month. Congratulations. Esther works at the Lynn, at our Lynn Boulevard clinic, and she works with Kim Wolf, who's one of our nurse practitioners there. So shout out to Esther and congratulations. And finally, I wanted to give a shout out 
to, I don't know if you all know this, many of you who work here know this or have family who work here know this, but every Thanksgiving we hand out uh, uh, turkeys to our employees and, and auxiliary. And so typically that's about 1600 turkeys that we hand out every year. It's a lot of turkeys, a lot of work. And I just wanna give a shout out to some folks that I'm aware of who do work behind the scenes to make that happen. Uh, and that is Jim Du Bois. Uh, he's uh, the manager of our environment, environment and services department, but he also is involved with helping out, hand out turkeys. And I, I can vouch for the fact that Jim was breaking down the boxes that he was bleeding from <laughs> breaking down the boxes. So shout out to Jim on that. Uh, Billy Tate uh, also was involved with getting the boxes where they needed to go because we have a lot of boxes with that. Robert Coleman helps helped out with that process. He also works with Jim and Carenza Pink, who's our dietary manager. We've had her on here before. And Carenza, so we try to get all 16 handed out on Thursdays, but sometimes it takes a little while because you have people that aren't there that day or work a night shift. And so Carenza helps us with getting some of those turkeys stored until we can get them all handed out. So shout out to all those folks who helped out with our turkey distribution last week. Okay, Marianne, is the clinic running a flu shot clinic or can you, you get it at your doctor's office? Yeah, I had that come up with me just yesterday, Marianne. Good question. So we we do what we always do, and this we did what we do always do this year with our flu vaccines, and that tends to go from October to the first week of November at our main clinic. We have a flu vaccine clinic for that. After that period of time, we have them at our outside offices or so satellite offices. Uh, have flu vaccine to give out to patients. So that's kind of right now, if you need a, a flu vaccine, where you would go is one of our satellites. If you see someone at one of the satellites, otherwise uh, would ask that you go to one of our, one of the local retail pharmacies. And of course they have flu vaccine as well. And thanks Marianne for mentioning flu vaccines, because we tend to kind of that sometimes get the, gets the short end of the stick, but it's really important right now to try to get your flu vaccine. If you haven't gotten your flu vaccine, I'm starting to, uh, to see flu people are getting influenza. Um, not tons in this area yet, but it's coming. And yeah, this is a great time. If you haven't gotten a flu vaccine, get it now. And I, I've mentioned this before, but the CDC has made it clear that they have, there shouldn't be any issues with getting a flu vaccine either at the same time as when you get your COVID uh, a COVID shot, or you, if you get a COVID shot today, you can get a flu vaccine tomorrow or the next day. So however you end up getting that done, get it done, but encourage you get those, get your flu vaccine as well. Okay. And I want to make sure I'm not missing anything else that I wanted to say. Okay. Um, oh, bonus news. So I saw this this week. Uh, how, who figures these things out? I'm not quite sure, but it was a, a study uh, in the UK. Uh, so if you drink mu multiple cups of coffee or tea a day, shout out to you because it appears that reduces your risk of dementia and stroke. So for you coffee drinkers, there you go. I'm a one cup a day guy. I don't know. Maybe I'll have to, I'll, I'll have to up my game a little bit. All right. So other questions. I'm just about done, but I appreciate all the folks have uh, sent in and asked me. I will will plan on being back here next week to talk some more. And uh, until then, I ask you, uh, uh, get vaccinated. Never too late to get vaccinated. Get boosted, boosted if you fit the booster categories. And I think everybody's going to fit the booster categories really soon. And what else did I want to say? Oh, and, and of course, if you have children and they fit in those categories of being able to be vaccinated, that'd be really helpful. Obviously, we've talked about this before, but for children, getting vaccinated is, yes, it's about them, but probably it's just as, it's also about like all the folks that they are around, like their moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas. And as we go into the holidays, that's a good thing uh, to have them vaccinated antibodies in place. And so they are less likely to sp spread it to folks who couldn't tolerate the infection quite as well. So I encourage that uh, if you're indoors uh, and you're not eating uh, at a restaurant or something like that, I'd encourage you to wear a mask. That is, that makes a lot of sense. Oh yeah, that's a good point. And uh, 
Yeah, and also, uh, I'll be back next week, next Wednesday. Uh, or no, I won't. Next Thursday, I won't be back. So anyhow, so happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Hope you have a great time with your families. Be safe. And until the Thursday after Thanksgiving, which, by the way, yeah, we'll have we'll do this the Thursday after Thanksgiving. I, may, I might have a guest host, but we'll do it the Thursday after Thanksgiving. Until then, thank you for watching. Bye.